pessoal, Ítalo Ramos falando direto do 17º Fórum GD de Geração Distribuída, aqui em Vitória, capital do Espírito Santo. Agora estou com uma entrevista internacional, estou aqui com o Ione Ziv, ele que é lá de Israel e é vice-presidente da Ecore e vai explicar sobre as diferenças de energia aqui entre Brasil e Israel. A gente sabe ali que o mundo todo está olhando para a energia renovável né? e o Brasil ainda está engatinhando a cada ano, a cada mês que passa, o Brasil está avançando. Ele vai falar para gente sobre o que, que o Brasil tem a aprender com Israel. Uh, first of all, thank you for this interview. So, first question is why the GD energy uh, is getting more important in our days? Okay. So, so the DG energy is important because the consumption of electricity increased in the last years. Uh, I don't know if you saw graphs of energy consumption in the last years, but it's going up and up and up every year, and we will have more consumption. Now, there is a problem to generate electricity in traditional ways. Uh, hydraulic, so you're dependent on water, and if you have a drought, so you don't have uh, electricity from that. And to have energy from oil and gas, we need very expensive power plants. So even if the, the oil and gas would be free, and they're not free, they're expensive, you still need to have a solution to generate the energy from them. And with solar energy, you can do this very simply. You have very cheap way to create uh, energy plants. And to have distributed generation, make it even simpler, unlike centralized generation, where you need to have a big power plant and you lose a lot of money and uh, losses and cabling for transmission lines. With DG, you generate the energy where it's used. So because the energy consumption is increasing, and it is increasing, especially now, uh, electric vehicles are coming, so you'll see even higher increase. You need the energy, and you don't have other ways to get this energy unless you allow more and more distributed generations. Okay, we have uh, some people here in Brazil that talk it. The GD energy, it's really expensive and they are waiting uh, the GD energy more uh, cheap. It's uh, true, it's a liar, it's getting cheap every year. So obviously it's not true. I don't want to say people are lying because they have their own calculations. And yes, there are some regulations like the uh, 14300 that came that are making the life a little harder with all these taxes, but still making energy from renewables is much cheaper. When you look at the complete project, it's cheaper than making it from other sources like uh, gas or oil or whatever way because the power plant itself is very cheap and usually the return on investment is in a few years. Uh -huh. uh, so what's the difference between the GD energy in Brazil and Israel? What Brazil need to learn with Israel? So I think the market in Israel is a little bit more advanced and you will see it coming here. Here it's very nice to see that the government is trying to protect the grid and is now also uh, entering all kind of regulations like safety regulations. We already signed Minas uh, Gerais. Uh, but what you need to take is more open to the market and let the market generate its energy. So I'm not saying that the government need to buy the energy from the, the generators. This is clearly, we cannot force them and they have their own calculations and decisions where to buy, how to buy. Obviously, they should buy the cheapest in order to better use the, the, yes. the people's taxes. But we cannot force them buy the energy. What we can ask them is not to disturb the people that are generating. And if people want to generate for their own use, let them generate. And if people want to push power to the grid, don't tax them for that. Give them credit so they can use the electricity instead. Yes, this will bring with time more solutions like storage solutions and advanced technologies. But what the government needs to do, and I hope to see them already start doing it, is more uh, be more free and let the people create their own energy and use it without disturbing. I'm not saying, okay, it would be great if they help, but if they're not helping, at least not disturbing, that would be great. Yes. What do you think about the tax in the sun? Have you heard about it? Yes, and again, I, I'm not sure uh, 
really if, if the people are trying to do so bad to the installers and resellers, I think that there are some misunderstandings and I think that behind these taxing the sun, yeah. obviously I, I don't think anybody officially called it taxing the sun. This is uh -huh. the outcome. But what they're trying to do is trying to, to have better generation at the right time. We have a problem with our uh, uh, PV generation that is dependent on the sun and every day at the middle of the day you have maximum generation and when you're doing solar energy you don't generate energy at night and in the early morning. So in order to balance it they need to make some incentives and disincentives and this tax of the sun is trying to do it. So yes it came out bad and they could do it much better and, and, and simpler but I understand the logic behind it. They're trying to have a more at least I hope the reasons are good and I, I hope they're not trying to do bad. They're just trying to do a safer, healthier system. And we, on the other hand, the, the installers and the, the, the distributed generation industry uh, should adopt and should have a more smart design in order not to pay this tax, not by fraud, not by lying. Of course, people need to pay taxes, but you could do better design to uh, generate energy and use the energy instead of pushing it to the grid or store the energy and use it later and avoiding this tax where possible. Yes, thank you. Thank you for this answer our you. question. Very yes. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Então é isso ali, acabei gastando meu inglês aqui no 17º Fórum de Geração Distribuída, esclarecendo mais dúvidas aqui pra gente agora nessa entrevista internacional. Muito obrigado. Thank you very much. E é isso. Eu volto a qualquer momento com mais entrevista direto do direto de Vitória, capital do Espírito Santo. Fique ligado, fique on.